So a quick edit on the video, I actually took this down from being scheduled on my YouTube channel to re-edit it because what I did was yesterday I streamed a, doing a ton of carries uh, with this build and a lot of people were coming up with names for it but the best one I saw was Tickle Tickle Beyblade which is basically what this build is. I tickle those enemies to death with my Cyclone uh, Slice. So credit to Tobias Spencer for the name of Tickle Tickle Beyblade. Now enjoy the video, enjoy the build and enjoy the gameplay at the end end and i'll see you soon so people i am back with another outriders video and today guys i bring you my cyclone build ah! and it's incredible it really is how's it going people my name is dpj and if you enjoyed the video leaving a like really helps out and if you like what you see and want to see more outriders on a daily basis be sure to subscribe now there are plenty of Cyclone builds out there, as I know mine differs to most of them. Moxie's is probably the best one I've seen so far, mine definitely differs to that. And if you enjoyed his build, you're probably going to enjoy this one too. Now mine's slightly different in the way it works and the way my combo is set up. But people, a Cyclone build is a Cyclone build. I mean, they, they do what they do. They do what they state on the tin. It's as simple as that. Okay, so we're getting to it. I'm going to start with my abilities here. So we have Temple Blade. This is the main damage output. Don't, don't, don't be uh, put off here. This is the main damage output and it deals incredible damage. And with a 9.7 second cooldown, I mean, it's it, it comes into play way more often than you would think. Then we have Cyclone Slice. This is in place here because it's great for just sponging while you're trying to wait for cooldowns of your other two abilities. It really is. I mean, yes, you can set this up to do more damage with this build you could de definitely set up to do more damage but not massive amounts of damage the main dps here is temporal blade and we activate cyclone slice i mean yes we do damage we're still we're still tickling those enemies we're still staggering them we're still uh deflecting bullets while our other abilities cool down and that's what's important here the third one we use here is obviously venator's knife as you can see and this is a super important important ability here um for the simple fact of it slows down those targets so if you're at a distance with a target they're shooting at you a sniper you hit them with this you can get close to them activate your other abilities and just do what you gotta do plus with our skill tree and a certain perk on it it introduces more anomaly damage for our other abilities so yes venice's knife is also very important too so on to the skill tree obviously we're going bottom tree and every single anomaly power buff here in terms of perk is selected there's no two which ways about that that's what it's all about. The more anomaly power, the more temporal blade damage, the more cyclone slice damage. The more we do, the easier we kill ads. We also are rocking uh, skill leech. Skill leech is also super important here too because while we're in that cyclone slice where our other abilities are cooling down, we want to just sponge as much health back as we can. So life transfer is very, very important, people. It really is. So, yeah. We also have here. Uh, increase your resistance piercing by 10% I mean why not why not that's what we want uh, we want to make those enemies weaker that's what we got to do people we also have this too anomaly siphon does that say activating your melee skill increases your anomaly power by 30% for 5 seconds and we'll talk more about the combo I use uh, with this build but it is basically it's a melee Venice's knife uh, two temporal blade slices, melee and cyclone slice people. That's what we do. But we will see I'll show you gameplay with this with this build in a quick second after we've talked about it. But yeah, that's what we do, people. That's what we do. We also have this continuum. Uh, decrease the cooldown of your damage curves by 15%. Obviously, this affects two of our three abilities we're using here, temporal blade and cyclone slice. So it's very important. We have on this two counter shield activating your deception skills increases your anomaly power by 50 percent for 10 seconds because this act only triggers with venice's knife it's why venice's knife is also important here and because it's got a quick cooldown it's more or less this is more or less constantly active guys within our combo we then have uh this increase your resistance piercing by 10 percent again why not i mean we could have this in uh, weakness afflicted on enemies last 30 percent longer but it's just i've tried this i've tried this with this uh, but it just it doesn't doesn't do as much as I'd wanted, so I've just upped to go this way. We've got more uh, life transfer skill leech. We know that. And we have this here. Uh, continue again. Uh, decrease your cooldown of your damage skills by 15%. Here we have uh, a cooldown on the temporal blade and the cyclone slice. So why not? And then we have this. 
anomalic acceleration. When your damage skill ends, increase your anomaly power by 50% for 10 seconds. Temporal blade, cyclone slice, cooldowns, 50% plus anomaly damage. Why not, people? It's what we do. Life transfer again, very important. Scorn of the Void. At the end of any damage skill, increase your armor piercing by 30%. And resistance piercing by 25% for 10 seconds. Again, this comes into effect with Temporal Blade and Cyclone Slice, two of our three abilities. Then we have here Shielded Readiness. You will not be healed for each enemy that dies in close range. Instead, your shield gain will be increased by an additional 20%. It's also stacked with a mod I've got on one of my armor pieces too, which we'll talk about in a quick second. I mean, I did go with this first, but I mean, you don't really need to use weapons with this build. And your firepower, I mean, I don't think bottom tree at all. If you want any kind of firepower build, you go top tree. And then we have this, Altered Executioner. For each enemy in close range, your anomaly power is increased by 10%. Absolutely unbelievable mod. Again, uh, a lot of the, the expeditions, enemies swarm upon your ass. So yes, this is very good indeed. So those are the skills on the skill tree I am using. So onto my armor. Now my armor is based upon the edge of time armor. We need that free set bonus here. We need that free set bonus. And even though these end the highest in terms of armor stat, when I do get the higher armor stat, these will be obviously substituted out. But it's the anomaly power cooldown reduction and skills of life leech, which is very important here. Unfortunately, it isn't on the gauntlets, because I've got the gauntlets here. It isn't the same on the gauntlets and it ain't the same on the legs. But I do, I up for Anomaly Power every single day of the week, especially with this build. Now, I've got the full set of this, build, uh, this armor, but in my opinion, it's much better like this. And I'll explain why in a quick second. So in the helmet, we have the exclusive tier 3 mod, Double Slice. This, guys, is an unbelievable mod. Damage enemies are additionally caught with an Anomaly Slice, dealing 50% damage. I've seen, I've seen my slices do upwards of 1.3, 1.4 million. That's how good this is. So yes, we also rock on this Grand Bastion. Cyclone Slice. Using this skill reduces incoming weapon damage and anomaly power or anomaly damage by 40%. Again, Cyclone Slice, we activate that to sponge that, uh, well, what the enemies throw at you. Yeah? So we, while we're in Cyclone Slice, we're acting as a sponge, even though we're staggering enemies, we're still doing minute damage to them. We're in that while our other abilities cool down and it is as simple as that. So your Grand Bastion and every other mod here, like I said, I've been using this 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 set for a week now. I've tried and tested so many other mods here. I've added extra Cyclone Slice damage, extra Temporal Blade damage, Temporal Blade cooldowns. But at the end of the day, you need, and you'll learn this if you try this. You you need additional armor. You need additional damage reduction. You really do. So Grand Bastion is great for that. On the chest piece, we have a rebound. While this skill is active, we reflect 50% of the incoming bullets back at the enemy. Again, an absolute incredible mod must have for this build. And then we have apply shield. Temporal blade. Killing enemies with temporal blade grants 5% shield. And this stacks with this one right here. So yes, guys. And I mean, like I said, this is one I've also uh, tried and tested with many other things. But it's, it's great, it really. Is. I mean, I've tried... I think I originally had uh, decreases the cooldown of Temporal Blade by 20%. I had that one here originally, which you don't really need because we're still in our Cyclone Slice. It cools down relatively quick anyway. I mean, you probably get a little bit more damage in terms of a full 10 minute run with a 20% cooldown on the Temporal Blade. So it means you can use it more often, but it isn't that significant. And I'd much prefer extra shield every day of the week. Okay, so on to the uh, lower armor here, we have these, which are basically, they're the same as these if we compare them in terms of anomaly power, cooldown reduction, and skill of life for leech. It's just I've got more armor here with a 11.2. Now you're probably thinking, but the pants are the edge of time. Ultimate duration, Cyclone Slice adds 10 seconds to the skill's duration. This isn't important at all because we don't want to be in Cyclone Slice that long because that damage doesn't come from Cyclone Slice. I mean, it's fun to use. Being in it for 20 seconds is fun, but it's not really needed, people. It's not really necessary. So yes, I'd much prefer Slasher, which you can see on the legs I'm using here. Um, the skill can be activated one more time before triggering a cooldown. Two Temple Blades is double the damage, people. It's unreal. So yes, we also have Emergency Stance. Now, I believe this is bugged at the minute. Is it still bugged? I'm not sure. 
all I know is it's very, very important. I mean, because your health will sometimes, because you know this game can go weird and your health just drops randomly and you're almost done. You're like, what's, what just hit me? Was that a sniper? Was that Broodmother's invisible purple shit on the floor that just drains your health? You don't even see it. You just don't know. So emergency stance for those one time, it's probably one in 10 uh, is very, very important. Now, when this gets nerfed, I still think it's going to be very, very important. Well, not nerfed when it gets fixed. I still think it's going to be very, very important. But again, this can be switched out for another. But if it like when it, if it does get fixed and it's not as efficient as it was, it can get switched out. OK, so on to my gauntlets. And to be honest, these are more or less uh, what we have here on the edge of time in terms of mud, the main mud here of healing slice. I can't remember what the main actually what the uh, mud here was for this can't remember what it was, what the tier 3 was, but it obviously weren't that beneficial. But Healing Slice, as you can see, uh, Cyclone Slice receives 6k health for each enemy killed with a skill. This is very important too. I mean, you will kill adds with the Cyclone Slice. A lot of the little adds when you're being attacked and uh, when you're trying to lay down that damage on the bigger bosses, you'll be going to be attacked by the little adds. And it's just, just it just keeps that health up, so it's good, it really is. Um, the only reason I'm using this over the gun, I'm using the Broodmother gloves over the gloves at the edge of time is because the anomaly power. We need that anomaly power. There's no two which ways about it. We need that damage output. So yes, and we also have as well on these damage absorber. Increase your arm by 52k and resistance by 10%. I don't think I need to explain how important damage absorber is, especially when you don't rock a massive health and shield build. So this is very, very important. And again, while you're in that cyclone slice, it works wonders. Now onto the legs or the footwear of the edge of time is what we use here. And we have temporal armor. Temporal blade boosts armor by 50% for each affected enemy. Last eight seconds, stacked up to eight times. It's unreal, people. This is a great, great, great perk. And I mean, I can't say that enough. I mean, is it stacked with everything else we have here? It works wonders with everything else we have here. But the thing is, you don't have to kill. You just have to hit that target. You just have to hit that target. And that's what's great about it. If you kill targets, you get an additional 5% uh, from the one we have here. Uh, so yes, not bad. And we also it stacks with this one right here too. So yeah, just make sure like when you come out of the Cyclone Slice and you, you ain't as obviously damage resistant as you would be in the Cyclone Slice. Activating your Temple Blade, we need as much armor and health as we can get back. And that works wonders. And then we have Duration. Cyclone Slice adds five seconds to the skill's duration. And the reason being is I can't use my Temple Blade here, uh, my Venator's Knife here. But you see, if I pop my two temporal blades and pop this by the time this runs out my temporal blade will be back and my venator's knife will be back at the same time if it's used so that's that's what's very important here so i'm going to rinse and repeat the combo and i'll just run around i'd melee or run and slam i'd throw my venator's knife i'd do two of them bat bat i'd melee again drop it again simple as that that's basically the combo and like i said you'll see within the uh with the gameplay I'll showcase in a second. So that's why that's very important, guys. I mean, five seconds is great. I mean, like I said, we don't need we don't need 10 seconds. We don't need that. It's too long. We're just gonna be ending up canceling and we're gonna cancel it with five seconds left. So the five second one makes way more sense. So yes. Okay, so weapons we use, and these are very, very important too. We want a weapon with fortress on doesn't matter what it is whether you've got a death shield whether you've got the mod you've dismantled your death shield and you have the mod put that fortress on your weapon because what fortress does is receive up to a 43 percent damage bonus based on your armor your armor i believe needs to be around 55k to get the 43 percent something like that could be a little lower but this damage boost affects everything guys your melee your weapon and your anomaly power so just everything we're rocking here in terms of anomaly power we gain an additional 43% damage bonus based on that. So yes, that's what we got to do, people. That's what we got to do. Uh, so yes, Anomaly Effigy. This, I'm only using this because it's 99.3k. I don't really fire this thing. But the other weapon we use is actually quite important here. Absolute zero. And I use this weapon for one reason and one reason only. Within the expeditions where you got those flying, annoying butterfly, those, those moth looking things that sting you, that shoot you across the map. You need to be able to freeze them mid-air so you can get over to them to lay down that damage on them. I mean, like I said, there ain't enough firepower in this build to kill them out of far. I mean, you can kill them out of far, but it just takes you way more time than it needs to be. So 
freeze them, run over to them, slice them up, slice them and dice them, it's as simple as that. And again, I've put Fortress on this too. Switch between these and we're good to go. We're good to go. And that's basically it for the build, people. So what we'll do now is we'll go into a expedition. Where, where am I? Oh, there we go. Let's go into an expedition. Um, archways, we can do archways. Or we'll just do time one spire. Why not? Let's go into this. Let's go into this. So yeah, guys, what I'll do is now I'll leave you to watch this build and how it works and how I lay down those combos. Again, like I said, Venator's Knife, Melee. Temporal Blades, Melee, Cyclone, while you're in your Cyclone, you're sponging those bullets. Your other abilities will be cooling down. Then you just use your Venice's Knife again. Melee, Temporal Blade, Temporal Blade, Melee, then drop those Cyclone Slice. Rinse and repeat and you are good to go people. But yes, enjoy the gameplay now, Time War Inspire. Hopefully I hit gold and watch how efficient and easy this is. Can't guarantee my damage output is going to be incredible. But it gets the job done. But yes, on that note, the end of the video has arrived. If you enjoyed it, leaving a like really helps out. If you're new around here and want to see more Outriders on a daily basis, be sure to subscribe. And if you never want to miss a video upload, you can turn notifications on by hitting that bell button. But guys, thanks as always for stopping by. And hopefully I will see you on that next one.
There's a sealed gate leading to the monument. Doesn't look like Kang had any luck breaking through. Must be a way to activate it. It's open. Whoa. The pack sure knew how to impress.
Tiago, the monument's clear. I got the pie. You did it, Outrider. And Kang's fighters are on the run. For the time being. Back in our land, interfering again! Haven't you done enough, Outrider? If you're still alive, clearly not. You're clearly capable, I should have never doubted. 